Thank you all for coming today. Um, we're going to be hosting a PMT reporting overview as kind of a deb debrief from the PMT reporting that you just submitted around October, November. Um, so today we have with us Tina from um, OJP and she will be kind of going over some of the uh, common issues that we've noticed and just helping troubleshoot some of those, um, doing a little bit of Q&A. Um, and just being a resource for all of you as we start moving towards the next reporting season. So we have a few um, housekeeping items that we'd like to discuss ahead of time. Number one, um, please keep your lines muted unless um, we open up the conversation. Um, we will have a question and answer period. So if you wanna hold on to your questions and ask those at the end, or you can um, enter them in the chat as we go along. Uh, there's the chat icon at the bottom that you can use to kind of keep the conversation going as we're going through, and we will try to check in periodically and answer questions as they come up or at the end. Uh, if you experience any technical issues during the webinar, please uh, either message us through the chat or email us at protectingfutures at jbsinternational.com. And we are recording this webinar, and the slides and recording will be available to you all in the coming weeks. So I will let Tina introduce herself and go over uh, the items on her agenda, but I just wanted to let you know that we are grateful for you all coming here today and joining us. So I'll let Tina take it from here. Thank you so much, Heather, um, and thank you for letting our team uh, connect with your subgrantees and um, have this session for you all today. Um, as Heather said, I'm Tina Dimashkie. I am a training and technical assistance specialist. I provide contractor support to um, OVC and all of OVC grantees around performance management and performance measures of their OVC awards. Um, and I'm joined here today by my team, the performance management team. We have our data analysts, we have our task lead, um, and our SME on the development side, they're all here with us today um, to answer any questions that you all may have. Um, we did put a few slides together for you today so we can talk about performance uh, measures for your sub awards um, based on the reporting that you've already completed. We will give you a high level overview of the measures themselves and we'll dive into um, a few areas that JBS had mentioned uh, you required a additional support. Um, but we're here, you know, for you. We're here to connect with you and answer your questions. Uh, so we will be focusing on that Q and A piece. And I think our analysts and our SME and our task lead uh, will be super helpful with that as well, since they are the ones that are, you know, reviewing the data, uh, usually for for the grantees. All right. So for uh, what you're gonna get from our session today, we're gonna be, uh, you know, providing an overview of our team. I already sort of did that, um, but we'll just let you know who we are and what we do. And then we're going to talk just briefly about why performance measures are important to OVC and what you submitting data means to OVC and what we do with the data that's provided to us. And then we're gonna dive into the performance measures for you all and focus on those two categories um, that were brought to our attention and then just have a Q&A uh, session or time where we answer any questions based on the content um, that was shared with you today or questions that you've had now that you've completed your first reporting period. Next slide. And next slide again. Awesome. So this is our team. Again, as I said, I am the TTA specialist. Um, I uh, conduct trainings. I provide uh, TA sessions, one-on-one -on -one sessions to grantees around management and measurement of their performance or performance measurement of their OVC awards. Uh, but we have, you know, looks like a small team, but we are a mighty team. Our data analysts are the individuals that are very heavily involved with the data that is presented by OVC grantees every quarter. They are responsible for cleaning up the data, making sure all the data is logical and accurate, and also reaching out to uh, grantees when there are any questions or concerns um, related to the data. They also are the ones that respond to requests um, from whether it's OVC leadership, uh, other offices in the federal government, uh, Congress, just 
or any other um, stakeholders around data requests and provide information and insights on OVC awards based on the data provided by our grantees. Um, we're led by Virginia, who is um, our awesome task lead, and she is our uh, uh, you know, support person um, across our different tasks. We also have our own help desk, and we have our own help desk specialist. He's actually the only person that's not on uh, the, the session with us today, um, but we do support grantees through a help desk where grantees can call to us. They can... Um, uh, email us and we can direct them to the right individual or answer any questions that they have. Um, then, as I said, myself will provide um, quarterly trainings for grantees and one-on-one uh, -on -one specialized TA around performance management and measurement. And then we have Liz Wayne, who's also with us today, and she is um, an, the individual that focuses on the system uh, for performance reporting. That's between our system, which you've heard of as the PMT, um, and uh, the Just Grants, the larger Just Grants system for um, grant management. Now, um, our team supports the prime primary grantees, so those grantees that are directly receiving OVC funding. We do not typically support subrecipients unless the grantees have asked us to. Um, so if you were to reach out to us, if you needed assistance from us, it would need to go through JBS. Um, through the grantee in order to make it our way, but we are always more than happy to help. Next slide. Uh, so uh, part of our uh, general support, you can contact us again while copying JBS um, at any time with any question that's specific to the measures or really just understanding um, what the measures would mean to your organization. We schedule welcome sessions. Usually they're around the use of the different platforms, um, but some some welcome sessions can be for the performance measures themselves. For any new staff members or if a staff member needs a refresh, uh, we can work with you on um, providing content that's needed for you and your staff. Our sessions could be anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour. We sometimes can you know, schedule follow-up as, as, as needed um, where we do a screen share session and go over the measures and the functionality in the system. Um, and like I said, we're more than happy to answer questions um, that come our way. We also do have an entire web page for resources um, for the different OVC programs. This uh, specific Protecting Futures program falls under the TVS performance measures and the TVS program. Um, as subgrantees, you absolutely have um, the ability to access this web page, and we welcome you. Uh, to access the web page to learn more about performance measures in general and better understand um, JBS's approach when it comes to data collection and the requirements that um, they have to adhere by as the prime grantee um, and as the, the grantee managing you all as subrecipients of grant funding. Uh, next slide. And again, the next slide. So now we're going to just talk a little bit about how OVC uses the performance measure data that's being provided and why it's important to provide accurate data as accurate as possible to the best of your ability and timely reporting. Make sure that there are no past due reports um, and that all the information is being provided to JBS so then they can do their uh, piece in providing it to us on time. Uh, we use the data to demonstrate the value and the specific benefits of the programs that uh, we oversee to Congress, the federal and state government agencies, the victim services field, the general public, and other stakeholders. We also use the data to generate annual reports as needed on the different programs um, and solicitations, and also to demonstrate output for or outputs for the grant funding that's being provided by OVC. Uh, we also uh, use the data to emphasize progress made towards achieving OVC's mission and strategic plans, and also program goals and objectives as well. Uh, and also, we are able to develop resources based on the data provided to better reach different target audiences, such as grantees, federal partners and agencies, and the general public to raise awareness. So uh, a lot of grantees sometimes will say, you know, we don't really know why we're reporting on all of this. We don't understand. Does anybody even see this data? It just, you know, gets into a spreadsheet or into the system, and it's 
is it ever looked at again? It really is looked at and it's looked at a lot and very closely um, through our data analysts and the grant managers um, that the data analysts support when they uh, present their different um, resources and reports and data requests. So the data is very important and we do pull it, um, whether it's in relation to different populations that are being served by OBC funding or different crime types um, and many other data requests that come through. Next slide. Here are a few examples of what um, we've been able to develop with the data that's provided. Again, program data reports that are specific to different programs and solicitations. Uh, topical snapshots that are, whether it's geographic or focusing on a specific population um, or specific demographic, whether it's, you know, age, gender, race, ethnicity, or specific uh, victimization type or crime type. We also have been able to develop data collection tools and review the measures to make sure that they are in line with the work that our grantees and subgrantees are completing with the OVC funding. Next slide. Okay, so let's talk about your specific performance measures. So OVC um, has general measures, uh, different question sets that are um, assigned to different grantees across different programs. These specific question sets that you see on the screen here are the ones that are assigned to the Protecting Futures uh, Award, and these are the ones that you all are responsible for. We have um, a lot more measures that we we ask grantees to report on. However, you're only reporting on these specific measures as it relates to the work that you complete. Uh, we have program activity, which is a very straightforward category, and I'll be going over all of these. We have training, we have technical assistance, which is one thing we will be focusing on today, and data gathering as well. There's collaborative partnerships, partnerships as shared measures, planning activities, policies, procedures, and changes. That's also a shared measure and semi-annual narrative questions that you are completing um, every, speaking to every six months period. That's why they're considered semi-annual. Uh, we always like to make sure that our grantees are aware that OVC only collects data or asks for grantees to collect data on OVC funding spent on OVC funded activities that used OVC funding. Grantees and subgrantees should not report on data um, or combine the data across their organization for the work that they are completing. They should only focus on the funds that are used as a result of their OVC award because that's the only information that we are asking for. It would be fantastic if you had, you know, data collection mechanisms in place where you were uh, collecting and tracking data across your organization for the work that your organization completes. However, that's not um, what these performance measures and what the requirements from OVC are asking for. Any activity that's completed from any other funding stream or source should not be included in the collected data that you're providing to JBS that they are then sharing with us. Next uh, slide. Okay. There are two different types of questions um, in the performance measures that you are responsible for as subgrantees. There's the quantitative reporting questions. These are your quarterly reporting questions where you are um, collecting and tracking uh, data about OVC funded program activities that were completed during that specific quarter, that specific reporting period. The quantitative reporting questions, I like to call them the numbers questions. Those are the ones that you're mostly responding with numerical values. Um, and providing a set of numbers to OVC. The other type of questions is the narrative questions. There's a, a set of um, eight narrative questions that OVC grantees are responsible for, and they are completed on that semi-annual basis on uh, every six months. These narrative questions are considered the qualitative questions uh, where grantees and subgrantees are sharing information about their goals, their activities, their objectives, and um, any factors that impacted their the delivery of their program during that reporting period. Uh, they are more like essay type questions where they're open-ended and you are just reporting uh, information to OVC on the work that was completed during that reporting period and being as honest and transparent as possible to better help OVC understand where your organization is with the OVC award and if you are able to reach your goals and objectives within the timeline provided. 
Next slide. Okay. So the first set of or question set that you all are responsible for is that program activity question set. This is an important one. The first question is pretty straightforward. It asks if there was if this is the last reporting period during which the award will have data to report. Uh, this question should always the answer to this question should always be a no, unless your contracts or your sub um, contracts have come to a close and you've reached your end date. That would be your last reporting period. Um, but if you're, you know, you all are starting out, this is your first um, reporting period that you've completed, you will have plenty more of more reporting periods to complete. Your answer to this should always be a no. The second question is a really important one, um, asking if there was any program activity during the reporting period. Program activity at OVC refers or is defined as whether there was any funding obligated, expended, or drawn down to complete the implementation of objectives that are proposed by OBC. So basically, was there any funding spent? If there was funding spent, then yes, you would answer yes to that question. If there was no funding spent, then you would answer no, there was no program activity. You might still be completing some sort of work and you will include that in your semi-annual narrative responses. However, if you did not spend any funding for that reporting period, there is no need for us to receive data from your organization, whether at the sub-grantee or the grantee level. Uh, because again, as I mentioned previously, OVC is only interested in the data that's being reported on OVC funding that is being used. So if there was a quarter where no funding was used, there should not be any data associated with that report. And you would be responding to this question um, saying, no, there was no program activity. You would need to provide an explanation to JBS. I'm sure they would be you know, in contact with you and you all are working together um, to identify when there is program activity and when there is not program activity, um, but just including an additional explanation would be extremely helpful um, for uh, when that information makes it over to OVC. Next um, slide, thank you. Okay, so the next uh, question set is the training question set. This is where grantees and subgrantees are to provide data on training activities that were funded as part of the grant um, during the specific reporting period. Uh, training events, the, this training category includes events that your agency provided, hosted, coordinated, attended, or planned with OVC funding. This includes in-person trainings, presentations, and virtual trainings and webinars or conferences. The question um, that you need to provide information on would be for the number of trainings scheduled and conducted, the number and types of participants who registered and attended or completed training host, trainings hosted by the agency being the subrecipient, uh, the number of hours of training delivered, and um, if there were any feedback surveys distributed, collected, and what the outcomes of these surveys were. Um, all that information would need to be provided for any training uh, or any funding used on training, uh, OVC funding used on training by the subrecipient. Next slide. All right, so this is um, one of the slide, one of the question banks that there were some common um, inconsistencies in the data. So we will, we will focus a little bit on this one. So for the technical assistance question bank, it's asking about um, number of TA activities that occurred during the reporting period. Uh, specifically, you are to speak to the number of TA requests that were received and the TA requests that were completed. You're then going to provide the number of recipients who received TA and you're going to speak to any feedback surveys that were distributed, completed, and what the outcome of the feedback surveys were. Um, the numbers for the specific category fluctuated a little bit where we, we felt that there needs to be a little bit more clarification. Um, <clears throat> so for this specifically, um, it was reported that some subrecipients had reported fewer TA participants than TA events. Um, now, we definitely understand that there may, you know, be a, a concern of duplicating the numbers. However, um, you know, we want the numbers to be as accurate as possible, but also lo as logical as possible. Now, the, it could be the case that, that those numbers are accurate, where the numbers of TA requests 
um, received and completed could be larger than the number of recipients who received the TA, as long as it is documented and it is accurate and it's recorded of what the TA received was, what the TA completed was, and how many participants received the TA that was completed. So the reason why these numbers could look um, a little bit different is if you, as an organization, counted the TA requests received, uh, let's say there were five TA requests received during that reporting period, not all of them were completed. Um, let's say three of those TA requests were completed. Now you have two TA requests moving on to the next reporting period, but you also had TA requests that were, let's say, um, requested in a prior reporting period that you're now completing. But that might, you know, uh, make it a little bit more difficult to track what exactly are you including in this specific question bank for this specific reporting period. So again, um, to do the math, you received five TA requests during the reporting period. You were only able to fulfill three of those, so two of them were pushed to the next reporting period to be completed, but you also completed two TA requests from a prior reporting period. So your total for TA requests would be five for received, and then for completed, it would also be, or it would be another five. This example is not um, working as well as I thought it would. But let's say there's five different um, TA requests between received and completed for that specific reporting period. The number of recipients who received the TA should be equal to or greater than that five of those that were completed. It could be just one recipient that received um, a TA request or, you know, assistance. Um, or it could be multiple ones that received assistance based on one request that was completed. So the number should be greater than or equal to the number for TA requests received and completed. And um, we can, I wish that we had um, this formula of what I just described on the screen here to help you better understand it, but we can definitely look at it a little bit more during the Q&A time. Um, but basically the number of participants or recipients of TA should not be less than the TA completed, the number of TA completed. If you've completed five TA requests, there has to be at least five participants that received the TA or could be more if it was multiple individuals that were receiving TA. The feedback surveys, however, could be, you know, you distributed it to all five recipients, only two of them completed it, and that's okay. So the number of completed surveys could look different than the number of distributed surveys. Um, and then you would speak to the outcome of the surveys completed only, not just the distributed survey surveys as a total. Okay, next slide. Okay, so for data gathering um, initiatives. So for the data gathering question bank, uh, grantees and subgrantees are collecting information on data gathering activities. Uh, so for this, um, you will see in the performance measures, it explains that the goal to produce and disseminate information resources that the goal is to produce and disseminate information um, that improve delivery of services to crime victims. So the types of data gathering activities that we have listed are around literature, searches and reviews, any needs assessments that were completed, any gap analysis, any reports that were generated, um, and there's also an other category. So this is, you know, we have a few types of data gathering activities that we have provided. However, this specific question bank can be, there could be additional types added to it based on the nature of the work that the subrecipient is completing and the, that the um, prime recipient of funding is completing and also based on the solicitation that they are working under. There could be um, some of our grantees and subgrantees that may report all zeros when it comes to data gathering because they don't complete any sort of data gathering activities, whereas there could be certain providers or organizations that are receiving funding uh, whose sole purpose is to complete data gathering work. For the specific um, question bank, grantees and subgrantees are um, uh, should be providing data on the number of data gathering initiatives that were completed during that reporting period and the number of information resources disseminated as a result of a data gather gathering initiative. Um, so 
An example would be, uh, let's say your organization is doing a needs assessment of another organization or a unit of support um, within your work, and you completed a needs assessment. Um, the completion or yeah, the completion of that needs assessment would be counted under the data gathering initiatives completed. So you would enter that in there and that would be one. Then for the number of information resources disseminated as a result of the data gathering initiative, you would be speaking to the data gathering initiative that you had logged in the prior question. So that needs assessment that you completed for an organization, that one, that one data point. Um, is what you're speaking to. Based on that needs assessment that was completed, were there any resources that were disseminated as a result? Now, across quarters, sometimes, you know, you complete a needs assessment. We know these take time. You may not have created or disseminated any sort of resources yet because you're still reviewing results. You're creating recommendations documents and things like that um, to be able to provide to the organization that the needs assessment was done for, or even if it's an internal needs assessment. Um, however, if you were to provide results of that needs assessment and present recommendations within that same quarter, you would count that as a number of information resources disseminated as a result of the data gathering initiative. That would count um, under that specific um, question bank. So do you see, um, you know, the number of data gathering initiatives completed and the number of resources disseminated does not have to always be the same. And it could be that in one quarter you completed something, but you didn't disseminate anything in that bottom question. The response to that would be zero, whereas the completion piece could be one or more. And it could be that, you know, you only completed one initiative, but based on that initiative, you provided multiple resources. So the answer to the top part would be yes, one, um, gathering initiative completed, but then you disseminated 10 different resources because based on that needs assessment, you were, let's say, able to create checklists in addition to the recommendations and, you know, draft um, new policy language and SOPs and you know, multiple different things that could fall under the resource dissemination um, piece. Next slide. Okay, so collaborative partnerships is another question bank that um, fall under your solicitation as a required question bank. And for that, grantees and subgrantees are expected to provide information on activities completed to establish or maintain partnerships that were funded as part of the grant funding. Um, so for this specific one, it differentiates it from the other partnership measures that we're going to talk about in a moment. This is, um, you have to keep in mind that this is, we're speaking about any partnerships that were as a result of grant funding. So the funding that you are receiving from JBS um, or you know, from OVC through JBS uh, would be the reason why that specific partnership exists or is ongoing. The data that is to be provided for the specific category is the number of groups, organizations, or agencies that are participating in the program during the reporting period. That is one um, data point. And as a total, so that you know, any new organizations that started participating during this reporting period because of the grant funding um, that is being provided and the total number of par partnerships or organizations that are participating in this project as a result of grant funding. It could be that they, you know, became a partner in a prior reporting period. And now you're adding them to any new partners that you're um, sharing information on. And then there's also another question asking about um, the gr number of groups, uh, organizations, and agencies based on that response that you provided at the top for the total number of um, agencies participating in the program, uh, those that utilize an evidence-based program or practice in the delivery of services. So that number would be, um, should be less than or equal to the numbers at the top for the total that you provided. Next slide. Okay, so this one, this is uh, what I mentioned in the prior slide saying that collaborative partnerships and partnerships are different measures. I mean, for the collaborative partnerships one, it's as a result of grant funding, whereas this one is different. Um, it's just as a result of the work that you are completing. Um, and so for this partnerships shared measure, 
the grantees and subgrantees should speak to or should provide information on formalized collaborative agreements developed and letters of support received that were funded as part of the agreement. Um, so the difference is that these are formalized agreements. Uh, so we're speaking to formalized agreements and um, letters of support. Formalized agreements are those that are signed by heads of organizations with authority to commit resources, whether it's time, dollars, staff, or facilities. And then letters of support are considered those that just lend organizational support but do not commit any resources. Grantees and subgrantees are to provide data on the formalized letters of agreements developed, letters of support that are secured, and the level of involvement of the partners. This is actually in the table form where you um, identify the level of involvement of the different partners that you listed are part of um, the work that you're completing with grant funding. Next slide. Okay, so then we have the planning activities, policy, procedural changes, and that's also a shared measure. For um, this specific one, we are asking for data around planning activities that were undertaken and um, agency policies or procedures that were either created, amended, or removed um, as a result of the grant funding and speaking specifically to those completed or created or amended with grant funding. Planning activities could be, you know, planning meetings, coordination meetings, uh, weekly, monthly, bi-monthly meetings that are being held um, in order or, you know, working on trackers to make sure that the work is being completed and things like that. Next. Okay, so then we have the semi-annual narrative questions. So those are the questions where you're not providing specific, you know, uh, quantitative data. These are not the numbers, right? These are the open-ended questions where you are really sharing with JBS anything that you think needs to be addressed, mentioned, or highlighted. I always like to tell our grantees and subgrantees that these semi-annual narratives are really the best way that you can showcase the great work that you are doing and, in a way, brag about um, your team and the work that's being accomplished by your team through the grant funding. Um, you can definitely share and you should share any problems, any delays or adverse conditions that are affecting you and your organization um, or affecting your organization's ability to reach the goals and objectives that are set forth by um, JBS and your contracts. Uh, you should talk about any significant developments that as they relate to your project. Um, these could be, you know, success stories um, or any development in your community or locally or in your state that have affected um, the delivery of the work um, that you're doing under the program. Whether they've affected it positively or negatively should also be shared. We always like to make sure that grantees know that these all the measures, really, and specifically the narrative questions, are not meant to really just um, get anybody in trouble or point to holes or red flags um, for a subrecipient or a grantee. They're really meant to just understand the nature of the work better, and they're meant to help grant managers at OVC and any you know prime grantees at OVC to advocate better for additional OVC funding for um, you know the victim services field. And the, the better we are able to understand the work at the local level that is done by our organizations that are working with OVC, the better we're able to advocate for more funding and change across um, the victim services field at the leadership level. So being honest and transparent and um, really explaining the story of your organization uh, for that specific reporting period will go a long way. Next slide. All right, so we definitely wanted to make sure we provided you with our contact information. Um, again, our performance management team, the team that's, uh, I'm, that's with me here today, we typically only support grantees. Um, and if we were to support subgrantees, we'd need to make sure that the grantee, the prime grantee, is part of any support that we provide, just so they are, you know, included um, and that they are aware of any support that we are providing. But we would be happy to hear from you as long as you just make sure that you copy JBS and your representatives at JBS so we are, um, you know, aware or so they are aware of our assistance to you. But we are, we're here to help. Um, either email us or give us a call if you have any questions or if, you know, you, you need some um, confirmation on whether you're, uh, the data you're collecting is accurate 
and that you're understanding the measures properly, we're more than happy to help. And I think that moves us into our Q&A session. Yes, great. Um, so I, I, I am the TTA specialist and I do tend to talk a lot, but um, we definitely have um, lots of time left to open it up for questions. Unless Heather, you um, had anything else to add to the session before we do that. No, um, we can hand it over to the subawardees to uh, share any issues that they had during this first reporting period or just ask any questions that came up during the presentation. So uh, feel free to either unmute yourself and just go ahead and um, ask your question or you can use the chat feature. Um, this part can be pretty informal. I will let you all know that usually, um, you know, when we are outside of a reporting period, uh, a lot of our grantees usually will forget what questions they had during the reporting period. And then when a new one opens up, they'll, you know, while they're completing a report, they'll remember, uh, oh, this is what happened last time and this is what we need clarification on. Um, so if you don't feel like you have any questions right now, um, that's definitely okay. Um, and, you know, as, as these questions come, you can share them with JBS and we can make sure that we provide responses. And once again, the slides will be available, so you will have access to all of the contact information shared if anything comes up after we get off of our call. Um, so you will have resources for next time if anything does come up. But if there aren't any questions today, I guess that we can wrap up then. All right, sounds great. Um, Heather, thank you again for including us um, in, this, in this session. And uh, we look forward to any questions that come up. And if no questions come up, it means that the me measures are so straightforward and everybody understands them really well. <laughs> Tina, you've done such a great job that there are no questions. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> We do Thank ask you. that um, you complete the post-webinar survey that comes your way after this. Let us know um, if this training was helpful for you and any other feedback that you have. Um, the webinar slides and recording will be shared with you shortly coming from the Protecting Futures email. And we will keep you posted if there are any upcoming webinars that you should look out for soon. So thank you again, Tina, and your team for joining us today and talking us through some of these PMT uh, points of confusion. If you have any questions for Tina or her team, uh, please use the contact information listed on the screen. And remember to include the Protecting Futures at JBS email as well, which is uh, down below it. And we thank you again for your time. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone.